There were doomsday like scenes in Russia. One of Russia's most active volcanoes has erupted, shooting a vast cloud of ash far up into the sky, smothering villages in drifts of grey volcanic dust and triggering an aviation warning around the country's far eastern Kamchatka Peninsula. The deadliest volcano of all time just cracked open the Earth. From the depths of the unknown, a primordial force awakens, shattering the fragile surface of the Earth. A foreboding disaster looms on the horizon as searing magma bubbles in restless anticipation. Once dormant, the world's deadliest volcano now rumbles with unearthly intensity. Will humanity be caught off guard, unknowing of the impending calamity, or will we be able to solve the riddles of this ancient force before it unleashes its vengeance on us all? Massive ash clouds are being produced as a result of a volcano eruption in Russia's Kamchatka region. Recently, a volcano on the Kamchatka Peninsula in the far eastern region of Russia erupted, sending clouds of dust more than 12 miles into the sky and blanketing large areas with ash. The ash cloud that resulted from the eruption of Shivalush, one of the most active volcanoes in Kamchatka, spread more than 300 miles to the northwest and covered numerous communities in grayish-brown dust caused by the volcano. The authorities prohibited any aircraft from flying in the area's airspace. In a few of the villages that were impacted, the local authorities advised residents to remain indoors and close schools. The electricity supply in two different villages was shut off for a few hours until emergency crews were able to restore them. According to the regional section of the Russian Academy of Sciences Geophysical Survey, ash covered a terrain that was approximately 41,700 square miles in size. According to the findings of the scientists, this was the largest fallout in nearly 60 years. A layer of dust measuring 8 centimeters thick settled over the settlement of Klayuchi, which is located approximately about 30 miles from the volcano. Residents uploaded footage that showed the ash cloud completely obscuring the sky over their homes. The governor of Kamchatka, Vladimir Solodov, stated that there is no requirement for a mass evacuation, but he noted that those inhabitants who are experiencing health concerns may be temporarily evacuated. Old Shivalush measures 3,283 meters in height, and its younger counterpart, Young Shivalush, is considerably shorter but more dynamic. There are over 30 volcanoes that are now active on the Kamchatka Peninsula, which is located approximately 4,000 miles to the east of Moscow. The Kamchatka Peninsula is one of the areas with the highest concentration of geothermal activity in the world. In 2001, Shiva Lush experienced short but impactful explosions and seismic activity, keeping everyone on alert. On July 31, 1997, following repeated explosions that propelled gas plumes high above the volcano, the warning level at Shivalush was upgraded to warn that an eruption may occur that week. On July 21st and 27th, gas rose 1,000 to 1,300 feet above the dome inside the crater at temperatures of up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. This incident produced plumes that were blown southwest. About 50 kilometers of these plumes were visible from the volcano. Gas explosions between July 22nd and July 26th created a cloud over the crater up to 5,000 feet, and these plumes were carried 60 kilometers to the northeast. There was fumarolic activity in January 1997. Fumarolic plumes in October of 96 rose to a height of more than half a mile. Gas and steam plumes reached heights of 160 to 1,000 feet between May 26 and July 26. There were eruptions in 1986, 1988, 1989, 1990, 1991, and 1993, but we have not yet located any record of them. In 1985, on May 26, August 8, September 19, and October 25, ash was explosively thrown from the crater. The eruption on September 19 produced an ash cloud that reached a height of two and a half miles. A single ash cloud was launched into the air more than a mile away on May 22, 1984. The lava dome didn't appear to shift after this eruption. In 1980, a lava dome was seen forming in the summit crater of Chevalouche in August. The dome grew steadily throughout 1981, eventually reaching a height of 590 feet. A gas and ash vent developed during this period, and avalanche material accumulated and stretched 2,300 feet down the dome's southern side. 
1964, on November 12th, a brief but intense explosion took place. This Besamiani-style eruption lasted for just one hour. A protracted increase in earthquake activity had come before it. When the greatest tremors struck at 7.07 a.m., they were immediately followed by a massive explosion that left a vast crater with a 1.25-mile circumference. The five main domes of Crater Top were destroyed by this eruption, leaving only the largest dome, Fourth Top, and a massive south entrance blast crater. A 6-10 to 10 mile high ash cloud was blasted above the Kamchatka River Valley, with the northern rim of this new crater reaching a height of 2,300 feet. Thunder could be heard in the villages of Kliuchi and Krachcha as lightning tore through the core of the cloud. In the settlement of ust Kamchatsk, the cloud's movement to the southeast caused complete darkness and electrical discharge occurrences. In three hours, around an inch of ash was added. Up to six miles south of Chevalouche, pyroclastic debris had been deposited by the eruption. This flow had a maximum length of 11 miles and a maximum thickness of 160 feet, at a distance of three to six miles. Huge chunks of glacial ice were discharged from their parent glacier more than six miles away. From 1944-1950, on December 23rd, this eruption's initial explosion took place, and as time went on, the explosions grew stronger and more regular. Ash was thrown to heights of exceeding three miles during the majority of 1945. Early in 1946, the Suilish extrusive dome began to take shape. By the end of the year, it expanded more than 1,300 feet, and the next year, it proceeded to develop by another 300 to 500 feet. Suilish started to erupt violently from its peak on April 6, 1950, but activity quickly subsided. Suilish was about 600 meters tall at the time and had a base diameter of more than a mile. In 1928-1929, there was a rather minor eruption that was hardly recorded. 1905, there may have been yet another poorly documented eruption. And in 1897, the central dome of Chevalouche was thought to have developed during the eruption. Within the crater walls, a dome formed between 1879 and 1883, but it was destroyed by an explosion. In 1854, Chevalouche was silent for more than 150 years, but on February 19th, it exploded fiercely, almost demolishing Fourth Top. A one-and-a-quarter-mile diameter crater was produced as a result of this explosion, and pyroclastic flows spread out to the south and west. Some of these flows can be up to 65 miles long, which is almost unimaginably lengthy. This eruption is believed to have been greater than the Besamiani's 1956 explosion and more violent than the outburst of 1964. Talking about another recent significant eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga High Up High volcano that occurred earlier in January 2022. According to the reports, the explosion was so incredibly loud that it could be heard in Alaska, which is almost 6,000 miles distant. It is said that the volcanic explosion in Tonga was the largest one that any piece of modern equipment had ever recorded. Researchers from the United Kingdom and New Zealand collaborated to produce a comprehensive map of the region around the Pacific that was impacted by the disaster. They then presented their most recent findings. According to the research, the eruption eroded the seafloor, which resulted in the redistribution of debris carried by the displaced water to a distance of approximately 80 kilometers in a remodeled seabed. The explosion that occurred sent ash and water vapor up to a height of 57 kilometers into the atmosphere. The tsunami that was created by this eruption in Alaska was devastating. It was said that the blast was 100 times more powerful than the nuclear bomb that took place at Hiroshima. According to the opinions of various experts, the Novado del Ruiz volcano in Colombia, which is often regarded as the most lethal volcano in the Western Hemisphere, is on the cusp of erupting. The Geological Service of Colombia upped the alert level for the volcano from yellow to orange on March 30th. They are issuing a warning that the volcano may erupt within weeks or days with a force that has not been seen in the past 10 years. On April 5th, Colombian President Gustavo Petro issued an order for the voluntary evacuation of approximately 2,500 families who live near the volcano. A great many residents have been reluctant to abandon their possessions and ways of making a living. Geologists who are keeping an eye on the volcano have noted an unprecedentedly high number of tremors occurring every day. Amid a densely populated farming region stands Navado del Ruiz, one of the highest peaks in Colombia at an elevation of 5,321 meters. It is approximately 129 kilometers to the west of the capital city of Bogota in Colombia. In 1985, the volcano erupted, bringing with it a slew of catastrophic events. The town of Armero was almost entirely obliterated as a result of the mudslides that it produced. More than 23,000 people out of the town's total population of 30,000 perished. 
Geologists, seismologists, and volcanologists are still mainly perplexed by the lava-spewing behemoths, although humanity has spent a significant portion of its existence living in the shadow of volcanoes and attempting to comprehend them. As an illustration, the level of danger posed by Novato del Ruiz has not yet increased since 2012 at the earliest. The people were placed on orange alert in April of that year for more than a month. During those two days in June, this was upgraded to a red alert status. However, there was not a huge volcanic eruption. Recent years have seen the testing of innovative approaches to the problem of determining how likely it is that a volcano would erupt. These approaches range from analyzing the chemical makeup of the air above active volcanoes to employing artificial intelligence to make sense of the pattern of eruptions. Falk Amalung, who teaches marine geosciences at the University of Miami, thinks that the danger should not be regarded lightly. This is a high-risk and well-monitored volcano, and right now, all the ingredients for a new eruption are there, explains Amalung in a university press statement that was published in Newswise. On March 30th, there was a significant seismic swarm, and the sequence of low-magnitude earthquakes strongly suggests that magma is moving. Novato del Ruiz is a glacier-covered volcano similar to Mount St. Helens in Washington State in the United States, which is infamous for its eruption in 1980, which resulted in the deaths of 57 people. According to Amalung, this puts the local citizens in an even more dangerous situation. Amalung provides the following explanation. Even a relatively small eruption would melt the glacier. The combination of volcanic ash and meltwater would result in mud flows known as lahars, which are capable of moving quickly and for a distance of several miles. Amalung acknowledges that it's impossible to predict the future with absolute precision. The increased period of activity could very well die down and nothing happen, he says. This is a possibility. Ironically, global warming during the past 38 years since the eruption that saw the inundation of Armero has meant that the glaciers that cover the volcano's peak are smaller, so lowering the lahar threats it could be caused by them. But it's also bad news in terms of eruption hazards because there is less pressure from the overburden to keep the magma at depth, Amalong says. Well, did you find yourself asking yourself the same question? Is it possible for the eruption of one volcano to cause the eruption of another? There is no conclusive evidence to support the theory that an eruption at one volcano can set off an eruption at another that is located hundreds of kilometers or miles distant on, on a different continent. There are a few historical examples of simultaneous eruptions from volcanoes located within approximately six miles of one another, although it is difficult to identify whether one eruption caused the other. Volcanoes that draw their magma from the same shared reservoirs have a greater chance of causing unrest in one another. The magma that drove the 1912 eruption of the Novorupta volcano in Alaska, which was the greatest eruption of the 20th century, originated from a magma reservoir beneath Mount Katmai, which is located 6.2 miles away. Mount Katmai did not erupt, but after the eruption of Novorupta, it sank into the magma chamber below it, leaving the chamber empty. Several isolated volcanoes and vents are thought to be a component of a bigger volcano complex. When this happens, the initial eruption does not necessarily trigger the eruption of a nearby vent. Rather, magma that is flowing toward the surface finds its way to the surface at many sites. As an illustration, the Tavuver and Vulcan cones are examples of vents found within the Robol caldera in Papua New Guinea that erupted almost simultaneously in the year 1994. On the other hand, not every adjacent volcano displays this pattern. Even though they are only separated by 20 miles, the magma reservoirs of Hawaii's Kilauea and Mauna Loa volcanoes could not be more dissimilar. Kilauea is situated on the slope of Mauna Loa, which is the larger of the two. Despite the closeness of the two volcanoes, it does not appear that an eruption at one will cause an eruption at the other. And that's all for the video today, but we'll be right back with more videos soon. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching.